Hey VC, how you doing? Uh, in this video, I want to answer uh, Dustin's thread. Uh, he he, his thread basically is create your own top ten list type of thing, and uh, I wanted to uh, answer that on this video. Dustin's a cool guy, and though I've never met him face to face, he seems like a cool dude. And um, uh, I really need to go vinyl digging with him and Laz when they hit Berkeley because I've been watching their Berkeley videos and I've been vinyl digging there a couple of times already. Uh, but I, it would be cool to join them because it looks like a lot of fun. So next time I'm in the Bay Area, I gotta make sure I I uh, meet up with those two and do some digging. Anyway, okay, top ten list. I'm gonna make this easy for me. Top ten Genesis songs. I'm sure after I film this video, I'm gonna wish I rearranged my list <laughs> uh, because my top ten Genesis songs changes constantly and. As I'm sitting here right now, this is the top 10 list of Genesis songs, and I can tell already I left a few out, but I'm going to go anyway. Number 10 uh, favorite Genesis song comes from this album, Invisible Touch. The song is Domino. Um, this song gets real, this album gets real criticized because it's too commercial. Um, even Genesis fans give this album a hard time. Uh, but there are a few longer songs on here. I don't want to say proggy because this wasn't really a prog record, but um, there are some of the longer songs Genesis is known for, and Domino was one of them. Uh, I really loved the the arrangement of it, uh, the keyboard sounds in it, the interesting drumming Phil Collins does on it. It's a good song, a uh, long song, but really good. And I used to remember when I saw them in concert and they performed this with the Very Light Show in 86. It it was epic. Uh, the light show they arranged for this song was fantastic. So, Domino is my number 10 Genesis song, favorite Genesis song. Uh, number two, for sentimental reasons, Abacab. The song Abacab from the album Abacab uh, is number nine. Uh, really the first Genesis song I've ever gotten into. This was the first Genesis album I ever bought, bought on a cassette back in the mid 80s uh, after seeing the video for Abacab on MTV uh, I thought Phil Collins looked really cool playing the drums and singing at the same time in the music video and I really liked the song um, then when I later bought Three Sides Live on vinyl back in 1986 the live version of Abacab is smoking <laughs> way better than the album version um, still one of my favorite Genesis songs to this day. Every time I go running, I listen to it on my iPod while I'm taking a nice jog. It's a fun song to jog to as well. So Abacab is my number nine favorite Genesis song. Number eight, staying in the Phil Collins era, is Mama. Um, when I first heard Mama, I thought it was a Genesis version of In the Air Tonight, <laughs> which is basically what it is kind of has the same character and feel and vibe as in the air tonight but it's still a great song and it took me forever to see Genesis in person actually perform this tune um, when I saw him in 1986 Invisible Touch tour they decided to get fancy with set lists and open with Land of Confusion and never played Mama then I see him on the We Can't Dance tour and by the time uh, they came to my show in Sacramento, uh, they had cut it out of the, the set list. I don't see it performed live in front of my very eyes until the reunion tour in 2007. And it was fantastic with the, with the big HD video screen behind him showing all these images of a sexy woman who's supposed to be a prostitute. And the, the color palette was a you know, nice, striking, bold red color with all the blue lights around the stage it looked fantastic and the big drum sound on here when the drums finally come in because it starts off of course with a with a uh, drum machine beat and when the drums finally come in it is fantastic and the fill sounds so epic so the drummer in me really loves mama so so that's number eight uh number seven comes from the album uh the lamb lays down on broadway and it is Flying the Windshield. Um, the reason I like Flying the Windshield, probably because of the live video that came out in 1976. It was called Genesis Live. And they played it as an instrumental. It, uh, it, it goes from, it's kind of a medley really. It's Flying the Windshield going to the Broadly 
on the Broadway melody of 1974. Uh, those songs are pretty much linked together. And in 1976, on the concert film, uh, Genesis played it as an instrumental. They, they left out the lyrics. And I thought it sounded awesome that way. And it has always been one of my favorite Genesis songs, uh, especially on this album. It sounds fantastic on this album. I got the remastered version, which actually I'll show you right now. Here's the uh, Genesis remaster that came out, I believe, in 2008. And what it, what it is basically is just, you know, the songs on an updated stereo remastered CD. And on a DVD it is an updated remix of the song in surround sound. It's just fantastic. And it sounds so good on here. And if you watch it on your flat screen with the surround sound speakers, It'll play the slideshow uh, that the band had behind them uh, back in 1974. So you get a visual slideshow of the entire album, every song. It's, it's fantastic. So Flying the Windshields, I don't know if it's my favorite song on the album. It probably is because I always get goosebumps when that song kicks in. So Flying the Windshield is, uh, is number seven. And the number six comes from the album Wind and Withering. The song is called Blood on the Rooftops. Blood on the Rooftops is one of my favorite songs that features Steve Hackett because it starts off with an acoustic guitar solo uh, that Steve Hackett plays alone. And I always loved the chorus in this song. It's just breathtaking. Again, I have the surround sound mix of it. And it is epic. <laughs> I mean, it's ear candy, really. And... And uh, what I find amazing about this album is this album and uh, Trick of the Tail all came out in the year 1976. Two fantastic albums and very different in personality came, all came out in the, se the same year. So Genesis are workhorses. I mean, they, they, what they can produce in one year is amazing. So, so um, Blood on the Rooftops uh, comes in at number six. But, uh, number five was kind of hard to figure out, but I do have to admit, this song blew me away when I first heard it, and I listened to it millions of times and still like it. It's from the album Trick of the Tale, and it is Dance on a Volcano. Dance on a Volcano, I, I just love that song to pieces. Uh, actually, I love this whole album to pieces, but, but Dance on a Volcano is fantastic. And when I saw the band in uh, 1992, I believe, on the We Can't Dance tour, uh, they played it as a part of their old medley. This is the song that kicked the whole old medley off. And it was so great to see that in person. Um, this has always been one of my favorite uh, Genesis songs from the 70s. Uh, it was one of the, this is the first album where Phil Collins took over as lead singer of the band after Peter Gabriel had left. And I think the band uh, really made a statement on that song because Dance on the Volcano is the first song on this album. So basically it's the first song you hear with the new Genesis uh, without Peter Gabriel. And I think it makes a big statement. And it makes it pretty, <laughs> in, a, in a pretty epic way that the band's going to be okay and they will survive. And Dance on the Volcano was a perfect track to kick all that off. Very powerful tune, very well written, well performed by the band. Um, I can't really say if any, no one player stands out, though I love the chords that Tony Banks plays on the keyboards. Uh, his choice of chords is, is just amazing to me. So Dance on the Volcano is definitely uh, one of my favorite Genesis songs, and it comes in at number five. Number four, this one took some thought, but I have to admit, when I first saw it uh, live on, on a videotape during the Mama Tour, uh, this quickly became one of my favorite Genesis songs. It's from the album self-titled Genesis, and it's Home by the Sea. This is the, uh, I think I think this is from Holland. This is a Holland pressing of the single Home by the Sea and followed by the instrumental second Home by the Sea. But I tend to lend, I don't really separate them. I, when I say Home by the Sea, I mean the whole thing, the first part and the second part. The instrumental on Home by the Sea is probably one of the best instrumentals I think Genesis has ever written. And I've been listening to it to that song since I was a teenager. I bought the cassette like by, back in 83, no, 84, 85, um, and was just blown away by it. I, I have the live video. Let me get it for you right down here. The live video from the Mama Tour, 
and uh, this is the first time I ever heard the song was was live and with the uh, with the lighting sh uh, production they put on that song is just amazing so it, it is one of my favorite Genesis songs of the Phil Collins era as he was lead singer because it contains like I said one of the best instrumental sections this band's ever written just fantastic and um, never tire of the song. Uh, they've played it live every time I've seen Genesis. I've only seen Genesis three times. Uh, but it's always one of my favorite parts of the show. And this is just... They, they, they really did their best here. So, so without a doubt, Home by the Sea. Number four. Number three comes from the album Selling England by the Pound. And no, it's not Firth the Fifth. <laughs> it is Dancing with the Moonlit Night. Uh, without a doubt... <laughs> One of my favorite songs on the album, probably is my favorite song on this album. Um, you know, it starts off with Peter Gabriel singing uh, unaccompanied, and the band just slowly comes in piece by piece, and then it builds to this just this great epic gem, and Phil Collins drumming on this song, once the song builds to some power, is very, very impressive. Um, it shows his strength as a prog and fusion drummer, I think a lot of people forget this part of Phil Collins because everybody thinks the studio and and one more night and another day in paradise and all the, all those pop songs from the eighties. Um, I think a lot of people forget he's such a talented fusion and prog drummer and basically shows it in this entire album and especially in the song Dancing with the Moonlit Night. Uh, it's just a fantastic tune with all these. Strange time changes and weird licks. It, it is, and it's, a, it's not even a long song. It's not the song is not really that long, so uh, and it 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 makes its point right away. So one of my favorite uh, songs from Genesis, as far as listening to Phil Collins as a as a prog and fusion drummer, amazing. All right, number two. I'm trying to make this brief. Uh, it comes from the album Nursery Crime, and that is the Music Box, or Musical Box. I think it's Music Box. I don't know why I, I get that title confused, but that it, it sums up what 70s Genesis was for me, that song, Music Box, uh, as far as the Peter Gabriel era. Just a great tune. <laughs> just a great tune. A nice little jam in the middle of the song, in the middle of the song that has this, this jam section uh, with a keyboard solo over it. And it's just the strength of Genesis in the seven, early 70s it is a perfect example of that section going into the end section of the, t of the song. Basically where Peter Gabriel would, you know, when he was in the, during the costume and mask era, would dress up like an old man and sing the last section of the song as an old man. Um, never really cared for his costumes and his masks. I just wanted to hear the music. All that visual stuff always got in the way of me enjoying the song, but... I gotta admit, it got Genesis noticed back in those days, and um, music, bo uh, music Box is probably my favorite song of the Peter Gabriel era, except for number one, which we're getting to right now, but Musical Box is such an awesome tune. And probably no shock to any Genesis fan, my favorite song from Genesis, number one, comes from the album Foxtrot, and it is Supper's Ready. Supper's Ready is just an epic, epic song. Um, when I first saw Genesis Live in 86 during the In the Cage medley, uh, they played Supper's Ready from the Apocalypse 9 8 section all the way to the end of the song. Um, and that was, I was speechless after that. Uh, I later found a bootleg video of them performing that during that tour in 86 and it was just, it, it was just. Um, like I said, I was speechless. I can't find the words to describe how awesome that that part of the song is. I mean, it's, it's a long song. It's one of the longer Genesis songs. It's, it's, it clocks in just over 20 minutes long. So it's a real long song. It takes up a most of side two of this record. And uh, I can't really put into words how awesome this tune is. Like I said, it's just fantastic. Um, you know, a lot, lots going on in that song. It's about seven songs all crammed into one big one. It's just amazing. Um, the only justice to do is to just listen to it and, and read along with the lyrics. It is freaking epic. The ending is like one of my favorite endings of any, any Genesis song. 
especially that apocalypse in 9 8 all the way to the end. It's just the best moment of Genesis as far as I'm concerned in those sections of the song. Well, that's going to do it, folks. Uh, I'm sure Genesis fans out there will probably have issues about <laughs> my list, and I'm sure I will as soon as this camera's off. But uh, I hope that answers uh, Dustin's thread very well, and see you guys in the next video.